Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. When is the last time you read the book of Jude and who in the world is Jude? Uh, for most Christians, this is not a book we come to very often. And for most Christians, if you ask them who Jude is, they might come up with a Beatles song, but I'm not sure they'd come up with the answer that's biblical. Uh, Jude, we're told in verse one, is a brother of James. And James, the writer of the book of James, is a brother of Jesus. So Jude is a brother of Jesus. And now obviously half-brother because those two young men or older men at this point uh, do not have the same father that Jesus does, the Holy Spirit, but they have the same mother, Mary. So Jude has a particularly close relationship with his Savior and in this case, his brother. Um, as you read Jude, you'll find some similarities to Second Peter. Um, Jude deals with, as many letters do in the New Testament, with some false teachers. He begins by addressing it to those who are called, beloved in God the Father, and kept for Jesus Christ. That's in verse 1. Well, that could be any Christian anywhere. It doesn't really narrow it down as to what, what area he's writing, or maybe it's supposed to be a circular letter. Um, it was written to Christians in general. And then right away he goes into the issue of false teachers. Who are they? If you look at the end of verse 4, for admission has been secretly gained for some who long ago were designated for this condemnation. Here's who they are. Ungodly persons who pervert the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord Jesus Christ. We don't know what kind of heresy this was. It seems to be maybe that uh, they were focusing on uh, God's grace as, as really a, a, a freedom from from having to obey any law or do anything that you, you, there was no morality associated with this. He compares them to the fallen angels in verse six. Interesting comment in verse eight. This is the only place this comes up. Yet in like manner, these men in their dreamings defile the flesh, reject authority, and revile the glorious ones. Glorious ones probably being the angels here or at least the Christians. But when the archangel Michael contending with the devil disputed about the body of Moses, he did not presume to pronounce a reviling judgment on him, but said, the Lord rebuke you. Now that story is not in the scripture itself. It's in apocryphal literature, actually I think pseudepigraphal literature, literature that didn't make the scriptures. It's uh, some literature from the Old Testament time period, uh, but not in the Old Testament. And it tells the story of the archangel Michael and Satan arguing over the body of Moses. And Satan argues, I should be able to take that body because Moses is a murderer. And Michael argues, no, I should be able to take that body because Moses was a man of God. And Michael wins that argument. Uh, there are depictions of uh, the archangel Michael with a sword in his hand, putting the sword through a dragon's head and the dragon uh, or the monster representing Satan. Uh, some interesting artwork of that particular event that's not actually recorded in scripture but comes from extra scripture uh, sources. There is another line here that's fascinating in verse uh, 14. It was of these also that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied saying, behold the Lord came with his holy myriads to execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of their deeds of ungodliness with which they committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That's a quote, but it's not a quote from the Old Testament. It is the only quote in the Bible from the apocryphal literature, which are those books that were in the Greek translation of the Old Testament, but they weren't in the Hebrew original Old Testament. And uh, that's from the book of Enoch. So it's kind of interesting that Jude does go back and quote from a couple of non-biblical sources to make his point. Clearly against uh, false teachers, clearly in opposition uh, to those who would draw people away from focusing on Jesus Christ. One of the most beautiful doxologies ends the book of Jude, and that's where we'll end today too. Verse 24 and following. 
Now to him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you without blemish before the presence of his glory with rejoicing, to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.